Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. UN Chief India's PM Modi launched Mission Life to combat climate change. Pakistan may buy discounted Russian oil, says Finance Minister Ishak Dar. And Sri Lanka aims to nearly double tax revenue by 2026 to tackle crisis. And now for all the details, United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday launched LIFE, the Lifestyle for Environment mission, a global movement to combat climate change. Guterres said G20 countries have resources to end war against nature. This comes as India will take over the G20 presidency from 1st of December. United Nations Secretary-General Antonio Guterres met Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday and held talks in western Kevadia town as they launched the Lifestyle for Environment or Life Mission to Combat Climate Change. Guterres, who is on a three-day visit to India, met Modi at the Statue of Unity, the world's tallest statue dedicated to independence hero Vallabhai Patel. At the launch event of Mission Life, the UN chief said G20 countries have resources to end the war against nature and to set the world on course towards sustainable living. India will take over the G20 presidency from Indonesia for a year from December 1st. The G20 accounts for 80% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but it also represents 80% of global GDP. So the G20 combined has the resources, the know-how and the power to end our war against nature and set us on course to more sustainable living. Reduce, reuse and recycle our circular economy. Our lifestyle is the life of our lifestyle. And we all know that in the world, in many countries, in many countries, there are such problems आज भी है प्रचलित है जो हमें प्रकृति के साथ तालमेल बिठाकर चलने के लिए प्रेरित करती है। A study by the Institute for Economics and Peace of 228 countries and territories found that 750 million people globally are now affected by undernourishment and climate change, and this number is rising. Well, parts of eastern and northern India are witnessing a spike in dengue cases after untimely rains created favorable situations for the mosquitoes to breed. Most patients survive the vector-borne disease, but it is estimated to kill about 20,000 people every year globally. Dengue cases rose across India on Thursday as hospital wards saw an increased number of patients getting admitted while doctors feared the disease to spread even further in the coming days. Dengue fever, which is spread by the bite of the Aedes aegypti mosquito, can cause intense pain in muscles and joints. Most patients survive the vector-borne disease, but it is estimated to kill several people, many of them children who are not able to fight against it. In the city, where the water was यहाँ लड़े तीन दिन पहले से शुरू हुआ तीन से चार दिन पहले शुरू हुआ है ये वाला बिल्डिंग पहले तो कॉमन था वहाँ तो स्टार्टिंग में 20-30 परसेंट था अभी टोटल संतावन परसेंट हो गया है ऊपर नीचे मिलाकर और बढ़ ही रहा है। Patients in Varanasi city in northern Uttar Pradesh state waited in long queues outside the doctor's room to get themselves examined after untimely rains created favorable situations for mosquitoes to breed. The doctor came to the doctor and said that it's toxic in the face, so you have to admit it. Then when the report came, it was clear that... What was the problem? It was coming up and the face was completely red-red. Dengue fever is common in South Asia, especially during the monsoon season, and there is no specific treatment. But with early detection and access to proper medical care, fewer than 1% of sufferers die from the disease. 
And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's finance minister Shakdar has said the country is ready to buy fuel from Russia if the same rate that India is paying is applicable to Pakistan as well. He also said that Pakistan's one billion worth of euro bond will mature in December as scheduled and exuded confidence that it will be paid on time. Pakistan's finance minister Ishakdar said on Wednesday the country is considering buying discounted Russian oil as he sought to allay concerns that the country might need to reschedule its Paris club debt following devastating floods. Addressing an event in Islamabad, Dar said that Pakistan is actively considering buying oil from Russia but it should be at price which is lower at par with the neighboring India, adding that if India is buying oil then why Pakistan should be stopped from the same facility. He also said that Pakistan was well positioned to manage around 34 billion US dollars in external financing in the fiscal year 2023. He said Pakistan's 1 billion US dollars worth of euro bond will mature in December as scheduled and be paid on time. Aapka khayal ye mehngai jo hai ye 6 mahine ki lai hui ye paune 4 saal ki incompetence misgovernance and bad performance mismanagement ka natija hai. Ye cheeze na 6 mahine mein aati hain na 6 mahine mein jaati hain. So our focus is that this damage is declining trend ko roke wo allah ke fazl se hum kafi had tak kamyab ho gaye hain economists say pakistan will have to explore all options to raise and save on its foreign reserves which have fallen to around one month of imports that consist largely of oil and gas purchases pakistan's economy already in turmoil with a rising current account deficit over 20% inflation and a massive rupee depreciation has been further weakened by floods the economic impact of which is estimated at above 30 billion us dollars Pakistan's People's Party chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Wednesday called opposition PTI chief Imran Khan a liar and a hypocrite and said it was time for him to quit politics. He said owing to the actions of Khan during his tenure as the prime minister, the country's foreign policy had to suffer a serious blow and now he has been desperately conspiring to come into power again. Pakistan People's Party PPP Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Wednesday called opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan a liar and a hypocrite and said it was time for the former PM to quit politics while he was desperately conspiring to get selected again like he allegedly did in the 2018 general elections. Addressing a rally after PPP's victory against PTI on Malir and Multan seats of National Assembly in recent by-elections, Bilawal, who is the country's foreign minister, said, owing to the actions of the incompetent and inept former Premier Khan, the country's foreign policy had to suffer a serious blow. Recalling the 2018 general election, Bilawal said that the people's mandate was stolen by an incompetent person who then went on to become the Prime Minister. Imran Khan, who was ousted in a no-confidence vote in Parliament in April, had antagonized the United States throughout his tenure, welcoming the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan last year. He has also accused Washington of being behind his ouster. Bilawal's statement came as Khan has been demanding a snap election, which the ruling coalition has rejected, saying voting will be held as scheduled later next year. Moving on, the International Federation of Journalists has called on the Taliban to allow all journalists in Afghanistan to work independently without fear of reprisal. In a report released on Wednesday, it said that the continued harassment and intimidation of both local and foreign media workers in the country is a grave violation of press freedom. The International Federation of Journalists, IFJ, has called on the Taliban to allow all journalists to work independently without fear of reprisal in Afghanistan. 
This comes as Afghan journalists have repeatedly voiced their concerns over restrictions on the access to information, saying security forces prevent them from doing their job. The IFJ released a statement saying that the foreign journalist and photographer Stephanie Glinsky has been barred from entering Afghanistan after being targeted by the Taliban for her critical reporting. The IFJ demanded the Taliban to cease its persecution of media and said that the continuing harassment and intimidation of both local and foreign journalists and media workers in Afghanistan is a grave violation of press freedom. The Taliban must allow all journalists to work independently, it said. Deputy spokesman for the Islamic Emirate Bilal Karimi said that the Islamic Emirate has not restricted or threatened any media and some of the journalists and media organizations who stopped their activities did so for other reasons. Earlier, the Afghan Independent Journalist Association said that more than 200 media organizations were closed due to economic challenges that also left more than 6,000 journalists unemployed. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe has said that the government aims to nearly double its tax revenue from 8.5% now to around 15% of gross domestic product by 2026. He said the increase in taxes is essential to lock down crucial funding from the International Monetary Fund to tackle the ongoing economic crisis. Sri Lanka aims to nearly double its tax revenue to around 15% of gross domestic product by 2026 from 8.5% now, President Ranil Vikramasinghe said on Wednesday during a national broadcast as the island nation attempts to find a way out of its worst economic crisis in seven decades. Vikramasinghe said the increase in taxes is essential to lock down crucial funding from the International Monetary Fund. Otherwise, Sri Lanka will be unable to access bridge financing from the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank. The president said that there is no alternative to restructuring the country's debt, but harder times are inevitable as decisions must be taken, however reluctantly. If immediate action is not taken, the country will go back to the era of queues. This comes as Sri Lanka is expected to present its budget for 2023 to Parliament in mid-November. The country's unprecedented financial crisis was partly caused by steep tax cuts in 2019, along with the impact of the pandemic. Unable to repay its debts with depleted foreign exchange reserves, Sri Lanka announced in April it was defaulting on its foreign debt. The island nation reached a staff-level agreement with the IMF for a 2.9 billion US dollars bailout in September, but has to secure prior financing assurances from creditors, put its heavy debt burden on a sustainable path, and increase public revenue before the global lender will disburse the funds. In a unique idea to avoid pollution during the Hindu festival of Diwali, volunteers of a social enterprise in southern India are making eco-friendly crackers which do not give out smoke or sound. They instead turn into various plants once they are sown in the soil. In a bid to avoid pollution during the Hindu festival of lights Diwali, a group of volunteers from the Paper Seed Organization in India's southern Bengaluru city are making unique eco-friendly crackers which do not give out smoke or sound but rather turn into various plants once they are sown in the soil. Diwali celebrated every year between the months of October and November usually marks a rise in the air and noise pollution levels as bursting firecrackers during the festival is a significant tradition. The volunteers have put seeds of sunflower, beetroot, cucumber and radish in the cracker packs to promote the eco-friendly idea. Because we believe that during the festive season, it is the time where we uh, uh, you know, pollute a larger uh, amount of uh, things to the environment. Now this time, uh, what Paper Seed has done is that we have launched a product that is uh, called as the plantable firecrackers. Now you put it in the soil and that grows into a, a vegetable plant in your backyard or in your pot. Firecrackers have for generations been an integral part of Diwali, which takes place next week throughout India. Authorities in some cities have banned their sale and use over the festival period this time, along with other measures, including controlling waste burning and the use of anti-smog guns and water sprinklers. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.